start with the end in mind you know it's one of those sayings that I feel like everyone says but nobody does it's something that's really nice to say but it's very hard to do in practice and I think this is on purpose to be honest you know um, you know it's not like it's taught in education if anything you know the general advice uh, you know from mainstream on how to live a good life is you know go to school work hard get good grades get a high paying job and you'll have a successful life but if we just break that down for a second we're starting at the start by going to school and getting good grades but if we start with the end in mind you know we think about what it is that we actually want and we work back from that and I think this is on purpose to be honest and this is a reason why I really I like I love learning but education I just I really didn't vibe with it to be honest I just couldn't see the point in a lot of the things that I was being taught I was just like well what's the reason behind this I didn't have a tangible reason as to why I should learn some of these things and because I didn't have any importance on them I just I wasn't really interested to be honest but just because this isn't taught in schools doesn't mean you can't benefit from this information and this information is out there uh, you know I actually got told this the first time in my life by uh, my mom but you know my mom kind of just said it but didn't really explain it to me and you know maybe she doesn't fully understand it either and that's okay because maybe I don't fully understand it either yet but the second time I came across this saying was when I read a really good book uh, highly recommend this book it's the second book I ever read and the only reason I read this book actually is because it was a free book on Apple books okay so I decided uh, when I was around like uh, 14 or something that I should start reading because I'd heard it was a good thing to do and I you know, wanted to be successful so uh, the first book I ever read was Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill but the second book was Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I think you can get this book for free on Apple Books or something like that. It was a free book. I didn't really have much money back then. So I was just, you know, I thought, oh, cool. I can read some free books. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. That sounds like a good book. I want to be a highly effective person. Let's read that book. And habit two in that book is begin with the end in mind. Okay. And if you truly understand this and do this, this is so so powerful like so powerful because a lot of people who go to the gym they just don't get any results they go to the gym because it's a good idea to go to the gym because because they've been told by someone that it's a good idea to go to the gym you know most people uh, you know work a job because they've been told it's a good idea to work a job and earn money and you know you've got bills to pay and stuff like that and most people do most things because it's a good idea but it's not actually what they want to do okay but if you start with the end in mind, you can figure out what you want and work back from there to uh, actually get it. Okay. Now, a big idea uh, in this chapter, uh, in this habit, sorry, is that everything is created twice. Okay. It's created uh, in, like mentally in your head and then it's created physically. And uh, a few examples of this will be, for example, Roger Bannister. Okay, Roger Bannister, if you don't, you're not familiar with who that is, he's the first person in the world to run um, a mile under four minutes. Okay, Before he did that, doctors and, and professionals and everyone said it's impossible for a human being to run a mile under four minutes. It's just physically impossible. It will never happen. Okay, And that's the belief that everyone had at the time. And because most people believed that, no one actually achieved it. But Roger Bannister the first time he ever ran a mile under four minutes. He believed it was possible. He 100% believed in his mind he had created, uh, you know, the idea of him running uh, a mile under four minutes way before that actually happened, okay? And your beliefs create your reality. Like, I, I cannot stress this enough. Like, your beliefs create your reality. It's so powerful. The problem is, right, is most people uh, you know have, are creating this mental image but it's subconscious programming it's given to them by someone else like when we're growing up as a kid we're constantly uh, you're programmed all the time and it's not like uh, you know our parents have programmed us like they, they've been programmed as well and they're not aware of it okay and it's actually you know peeling back the layers and digging deeper into why you have certain beliefs is a really like powerful thing to do but um, 
a quote which kind of really reminds me of this is if you don't have a plan you'll become part of someone else's and I honestly think like this is almost the goal of education is because you know the advice of education is go to school work hard get good grades uh, you know and then you'll live a happy life or whatever but I guarantee most people who who follow that advice <laughs> Are not are not going to be happy with where they end up, or if they are, it's not it's despite having those beliefs, not because of having those beliefs. Okay. Now we all have unconscious programming. We all have faulty paradigms and faulty belief systems that we believe that are actually holding us back, and uh, this is uh, something that I still experience on a daily basis. Even yesterday, for example. So yesterday I ordered some food. I ordered, uh, you know, uh, 300 grams of chicken breast, um, some sweet potato fries and four eggs. It was quite a big meal and not bigger than normal, but I wasn't that hungry. And I noticed I was full. I'd, I'd, I'd eaten about half the food and I was full, but I was kind of like uh, thinking about something else. I was eating and you know, I was distracted and I was forcing the food down. And I'm like, hang on a minute, why am I full? Well, I, not why am I full, I, why, why am I still eating if I'm full? Especially if I'm trying to lose weight, like I may as well just, you know, uh, stop, <laughs> stop eating if I'm full. But I can remember as a kid, uh, you know, my mom and my grandparents would say, oh, you know, James, you should never leave food. Uh, there's, you know, there's kids starving in Africa, so you should never, you should never leave your food. <laughs> First of all, that logic does not make any sense whatsoever because regardless of whether I leave the food or not, you know, unfortunately, there's still going to be kids that are starving in Africa. And, and the, whether I force feed that food or not, it's not going to make a difference to them. So it kind of, it's, it's faulty logic, okay? But that is an idea that has been planted in my mind when I was younger, when I was too young to truly evaluate the logic of that thing. And it's still with me today. And it's still affecting my actions today, even though... <laughs> you know, I, I'm, it's not like I'm, uh, I really need to finish that food or even need to save it. Like I could throw that food away. It wouldn't make a difference. I could order it again later. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm in a position like when I was younger, you know, I didn't have a lot of money. Uh, I can remember many times where, you know, I didn't have 20 pounds uh, to, you know, to fill my car up with petrol. Okay. So it's not like I'm in that position anymore. I'm not in a position of scarcity, but I still have that scarcity mindset uh, ingrained deep within me, okay? And you will have some faulty belief systems. There'll be some things that you believe to be true that are actually true. And they're actually affecting your actions on a daily basis. You're not even aware of it and it's holding you back. So what can you do about this? Well, a really powerful thing you can do is meditation. Okay, meditation really allows you to become more self-aware. It's almost like you take a step out of your own head, you take a step back and you observe your thoughts as they are, simply as thoughts and not as you as a person. Like you are not actually your thoughts. You and your thoughts are something completely different. And you have the ability to just become aware, observe your thoughts for what they are, and then just uh, you know, you can make a decision to simply ignore a thought or you can um, make a decision to engage and, and continue with a thought. And sometimes if you have a negative thought, right, you, you might notice that one negative thought leads to another. And what you, what's happening is you, you're engaging with that negative thought and then it's growing and growing and growing and then you might have no, more negative thoughts. For example, you know, someone might, uh, on these videos, for example, sometimes I get some hate comments, right? Now, I could read that comment uh, and then, uh, you know, I could really like take that to heart, take that personally, and then I could be thinking about other things throughout my day, and then I could just be looking at everything negatively. But instead, I just read the comment, I'm like, oh, okay, that's an interesting perspective, that's nice, that person must just be having a bad day, or, you know, maybe th they don't like the way I talk or something like that, no problem, can't please everyone, I hope they have a great day, and thank you for commenting, by the way, because, you know, it really helps out the algorithm. You know what I mean? So I have a choice right there to either like, you know, interact with the negativity or try and see the positive. And this is what meditation allows you to do. Now, um, I got into meditation when I was about 18. I kind of got into it before it's cool. I feel like it's kind of like a cool thing that's talked about now. But how I got into it is I saw a TED talk 
by Andy Puddycomb. Okay, if you type in TED Talk Andy Puddycomb, he's this like monk who came back to the Western world and wanted to like bring meditation to the masses without some of like the religious stuff behind it. And he created an app called Headspace. I believe he's done very well off this, probably multi, multi millions. Created an app called Headspace. So I downloaded this app called Headspace, uh, you know, and just 10 minutes a day, every single day for like three or four years. I was super consistent. I actually went deep down the meditation rabbit hole. And at one point I was doing up to like 30 to 40 minutes a day. Uh, you know, people thought I was going a little bit crazy, but uh, I really, even to this day right now, I don't do meditation anymore. I know it's something that I should do, but I still feel like I benefit from that practice before because I feel like what meditation allows you to do is it allows you to work your attention and you focus like a muscle. So a bit like you go to the gym, okay, and you'll do like a, a bicep curl, right? And your, your biceps are gonna go stronger over time. I feel like your attention and your focus is like that as well. And what meditation allows you to do is like almost like a workout for the mind. And it allows you to practice learning how to focus, uh, learning how to hold your attention and learning how to focus on what you actually want. So meditation, if you're not doing it right now, I would 100% recommend that you do it. Um, just me talking about this now is kind of making me want, want to do meditation. So I might have to add it back into my daily routine. But what it's gonna allow you to do is step outside of your own thoughts, okay? It's gonna allow you to see where you're, where you're messing yourself up. It's gonna allow you to look at your faulty belief systems, break them down, and create new ones, okay? Because your beliefs create your reality. Like I've, I've talked about this before, but it, this is so powerful. Like for example, if you believe that making money is hard, you will always struggle to make money. If you believe that making friends is difficult, you will struggle to make friends. If you believe you're a hard gainer and you can't build muscle like I believed years ago, you will be a hard gainer and you won't build muscle. If you believe that it's impossible to hit your goals and you will never achieve them, well, guess what? You are right. Uh, and there's actually a quote uh, about this, like the man who thinks he can and the man who thinks he can't are both right. And this is what it's talking about, okay? Your beliefs create your reality. Okay, so what do we do? Let's get into the absolute specifics, okay? Well, the first step is to figure out what do you want? What, what is the goal? What is the North Star goal? What, in your life, what do you want? Where do you want to live? What car do you want to drive? If you want a car, you know, if that's important to you. Uh, you know, what kind of person do you wanna be? What kind of family do you wanna have? What kind of values do you wanna have? Um, you know, what country do you wanna live in? What, what kind of work do you want to do for a living? What's gonna make you happy? What's, what are you gonna spend your days with? And if you get super, super clear on exactly what it is that you want, this is so powerful. Um, uh, you know, something that, is, that comes, um, some, some things that you can do to really help enhance this further is vis visualization and affirmations, okay? Visualization and affirmations, super powerful. It's about creating, you know, uh, that mental, uh, the mental constructs, because it has to exist in your mind first before it can exist in the physical world. Okay, so for example, say for myself, say I've got a goal, I haven't, don't have this goal, but let's just say I do have this goal, to get to a million subs on YouTube, okay, because that's how I'm talking to you right now. Let's say, okay, I wanna get to a million subs on YouTube. Okay, that's great. That seems like a massive goal. And considering how many subs I've got right now, <laughs> it seems extremely unrealistic because most people don't achieve it. But let's just break it down for a second. Okay, so I wanna get to a million subs. Right, well, what do I need to do to get there? Which is, you know, how are we gonna achieve this? Uh, okay, well, I need to create videos. Okay, how many videos do I need to create? Or how many views do I need to get? And okay, so if I need to get a million subs, maybe I need to get 10, uh, 10 million views or 100 million views. Okay, so how many videos do I need to create to get a 10 million views? What skills do I need to have to be able to create videos that are capable of getting views? And do you see how you can just step by step, I'm starting with the end in mind, which is a million subs, and then I'm gradually working back to, okay, what do I need to do today uh, in order to get a step closer to that goal? And that's the, the first thing that when I speak with potential clients is we need to figure out what do you want, okay? Because as a coach, 
I can't help you get to where you want to go if you don't know where you want to go, okay? So we need to figure out what it is that you want and can I help you? So if you come to me and say, James, I want to make millions per year, I'm going to say, sorry, I can't help you with that yet because I haven't made that amount of money yet, okay? But if you came to me and said, James, I want to get in the best shape of my life, I'd be like, perfect. Chances are I can probably help you with that. What does that mean though? Because that is a very like kind of like ambiguous term. It's not specific, it's hard, it's not tangible. So when I speak with clients, it's like, where are you right now? What's your current weight? Uh, you know, what's your current body fat? And where do you want to be? In an ideal scenario, what is the exact weight that you want to be? What is the exact uh, body fat percentage that you want to be? And now we have a clear uh, sort of, uh, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? We have a clear destination and we have a clear start point, okay? So from A to B, we know exactly you know, what we need to do uh, to get from A to B, okay? And that is the power of working with a coach is because rather than trying to you know, figure out everything by yourself and learn step by step, you can just go to someone who has done this many times already and they can just give you the blueprint, the roadmap to get to where you wanna go as fast as possible. Okay, so step one, you figure out what you want. And even if you, you, you're not working with a coach, you need to do this for yourself. Like you will never get what you want if you don't know what you want, okay? So I'm gonna make future videos on how to figure out what it is that you want. For, for me, I always had a voice in the back of my head kind of telling me, uh, you know, what, that I wanted to do fitness, but I kind of ignored it for years. But, and, and if you have a little voice in the back of your head, then I would definitely listen to that because that's probably a clue as to what you should be doing. If you don't have that voice, uh, I'm gonna make future videos on this, all right? Because uh, I know some of you commented on the videos. Okay, so step one is to figure out what you want. Step two is to figure out how to get there. So we need to break it down. I, I use the example with a million subs, but let's just use another example. Let's say that you wanna make a million pounds a year, okay? Now, a million pounds, uh, you know, sounds like a hell of a lot of money. Oh, before like when i was younger and i had no money that that would have just seemed extremely unrealistic to me right now uh, you know a million pounds a year is extremely reasonable definitely achievable uh, i will 100 percent do that in my lifetime um without a doubt okay but that's only because i believe what i believe now but before i believe that making money was hard and making money was difficult and uh, you know money is scarce and because i held those beliefs i was i was not the person capable of making a million pounds a year but now the beliefs are out of the way. Let's assume for a second that, okay, a million pounds a year. Well, how do we, how do we make a million pounds a year? Well, let's divide a million by 12. And we get 83,000 per month, okay. 83,000 per month. Well, a million a year sounds like a hell of a lot, but 83,000 per month, don't get me wrong, it still sounds like a lot, but it sounds like a much more achievable, more tangible number, okay? So, okay, how can we make 83,000 per month? Well, let's keep the maths it's nice and simple. Let's say, uh, you are charging 1k per month for your service maybe it's a coaching service uh, maybe it's some kind of like social media service or you know you're charging p people individuals or businesses 1k per month okay well now that means you only need 83 customers okay so we've gone from 1 million a year which is this big goal which is kind of like hard to like quantify because it's so big down to I need to find 83 people okay now Excuse me. There is uh, 8 billion people on this planet, okay? Now out of that 8 billion, let's be honest, uh, not all of them are capable capable of paying 1K per month. Let's say it's just 1 billion, or actually let's just say it's like 800 million. But still, you're telling me that you can't learn a skill or you can't uh, learn a valuable service to be able to find 83 people to pay you 1K per month? Anyone who is watching this video right now has the skills uh, and everything that they need to be able to teach themselves to be able to make one million per year. When you break it down like this, it just sounds so simple. And it is, it is just this shit is not taught in schools, all right? And I believe it's not taught in schools for a reason because if people actually did this, we would be much more free thinkers. Society would, you know, maybe a little bit more chaotic because everyone would be f focused on, you know, their things that they want to do instead of, you know, just being another cog in the system. All right, guys, so this stuff is super, super powerful. It's called reverse engineering, okay? You need to figure out, you know, 
you know, anyone, like what I've really noticed with people who win, like people at the top of the game, they know exactly what they want, they know exactly how to get there, they don't care what people think, they ignore the naysayers, they ignore the haters, they ignore everyone else, they, they don't get distracted, they don't chase multiple things, they're not chasing 10,000 different things, they have one goal or they have a few goals that they really care about and for 24-7, 365 days a year, they focus and they go all in and they just get it. Okay guys, so if that's what you wanna do, you know, whether it's you know with your business, with your life, whatever it is that you want, you first have to decide uh, you what that is and then just go all in attack it and just get it done all right guys i hope that helps if you want help with your fitness and your health and optimizing you know your training your, your nutrition your lifestyle and get everything optimized so that you're in a good place to you know not only attack your fitness but uh, you, your life and your mindset and everything like that you can head to jamesweetland.com for coaching and other than that guys thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you soon